Let's do a quick recap. We finish modeling our cupcake using various techniques like polymodeling, using curves both by drawing them and by using Bezier handles and we learned how to create procedural systems with geometry nodes. Now we can move on to shading. Shading basically means we tell Blender how to interpret the surface of an object. To start, let's select the cup of the cupcake and from the settings menu go to materials, then create a new material. We can edit its settings directly from here, but there is a better way. Let's change the geometry nodes viewport into a node editor and here you can see we have the same options as in the settings tab, but displayed in a much more organized way. Before we start making the material, we need to see how it looks. We can do that from the preview, but to be more accurate, set the 3D viewport to rendering mode using the zip pie menu, or just do it from up here. We don't have any lighting in our scene, that's why everything is grey. To fix that for now, expand the shading rollout and uncheck scene world. This will automatically add environment lighting to the viewport and you can choose from a few different ones. This next part is something we're going to cover thoroughly later, so don't worry if you skip it right now, but it might make your viewport render faster. Go to render settings, pick cycles and make sure you check GPU rendering instead of CPU. If you have a dedicated GPU on your machine, it will surely render faster than CPU. If you have a newer RTX graphics card, you can even go to Edit, Preferences, System, Cycles Render Device and select Optics. Then check your GPU. Like I said, I will explain the render settings more in depth later, so for now just do these steps. But if you miss them, it's ok. Now we can go back to setting up the material. The basics are, the diffuse color will determine the overall look of the object and the roughness will change how reflective the surface is. A higher value makes for a rougher surface, while the closer we get to zero, the more the surface looks polished. If you want to make something less reflective in general, you can either lower the IOR value or the specular value but my advice is to keep these to the default settings, unless you know what you are doing. To make the surface appear bumpy, we can also add a bump node and connect it to the normal. Now it doesn't do anything because it needs a texture. Just to illustrate, I'll add a noise texture and tweak the settings a bit. For this shader, I will stick with something colorful and rather mid roughness. I'm going for a plastic or rubbery feel, for that we don't need the bump. Of course, there are other options in the shader and we are going to explore them while shading the rest of the model. Also, if you have skipped some of the previous steps but wish to follow along from here, you can get all the project files for this tutorial series from the link in the description below. I will also be adding some bonus videos in there if anyone wants to speed up their learning process. Subscribe for more tutorials and see you in the next episode.